I come to announce to you there is about to be a resurrection for somebody. When you don't exercise your faith, it will not be strong. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We must continue to be hearing the word of God. This is Get Connected with Bishop Israel Adey Ajala. Welcome to Get Connected with Bishop Israel Adey Ajala. Welcome to the Kindness Revolution instituted by Bishop Ajala. It has been taking the nation by storm. The East Coast, the West Coast, everywhere you go, everyone is talking about the kindness revolution. And today, the focus of the topic is the greatest act of kindness. Here is Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. It's, it's not that difficult to be kind. It's not difficult to be kind. Uh, and today we want to share on the greatest act of kindness. I want to take you to John chapter 1, verses 40 to 42. The Bible says, um, one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Now, when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. You see, I said the greatest act of kindness you can do to anyone is to bring them to Christ. You can give people food, you can give, which we do at Kingdom Connection. You can give people clothing, but the greatest act of kindness is bringing somebody to the place where they know and come into the knowledge of Christ. I tell people at Kingdom Connection, I said, you know, Jesus is the only one that we celebrate his birthday and he never gets a gift. We, we, we exchange gifts among ourselves. You know, some of us, like I, I, I always say, you know, some of us are expert in rewrap. You know, the, the gift they give you five years ago, you rewrap it in another, and you give it to a friend close by, and then only for him to open it and say, oh, this was the gift I got seven years ago. It has come around. You see, but we never give Jesus a gift. The gift you give to Jesus is another believer, is a soul. When the Bible never says heaven rejoice when somebody is healed. The Bible didn't say heaven rejoice when somebody uh, gets a new job. Those are good. The only time the Bible tells us heaven through a party is when somebody gave his life to Christ. Which means the only gift that heaven recognizes as a genuine gift is somebody coming to know the Lord. So the greatest act of kindness you and I can, give, can do is to show people the way to Christ and bring them to Christ. Now, all our accomplishment is nothing until Christ enters it. When Jesus is in the equation, equation balances. If Christ is not in the equation, I don't care how much you try, it is lopsided. You know, now look at this situation. I, I, I saw the greatest act of kindness from Andrew. Andrew, when Andrew met Jesus, he looked for his brother, Simon Peter. The Bible says Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And he first went to find his own brother. Are there people in your house that are not safe? Are there people in your family that are not safe? Unfortunately, the world we are today, we are so cantankerous, so in your face, that it's so difficult for many Christians now 
to go back to the same people you've called bad name and share Christ with them. But if you would just swallow your pride and you would just go to them and say, you know, I did it out of the flesh, but Jesus still loves you and I do too. And you begin to show them the act of kindness. You know that people will say, can I go with you to whatever is going on? I remember, I remember uh, the cross and the switchblade. Yes. That movie, remember? I remember. I, I, and, 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 and it was a time for, for um, 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 Nicky Cruz. He was supposed to, 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 to revenge at a man. The man wanted to take him out and Nicky kind of you know, bring, brought him down and he took the knife and the guy was expecting that Nicky would, would, would put the knife in him and Nicky said, I forgive you. And the man said, wow. And he, he said, that preacher has been doing something on you. That preacher <laughs> is doing something on you. You see, he showed the, and, and through that, they came with Nicky to church. You know, it is important that we realize that a life of cantecheros, a life of I'm in your face, I'm better than you, blah, 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 is not going to help us in bringing people to Christ. And the greatest act of kindness in this month of December that we are going to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ is to bring somebody to Christ. When Jesus was born, they said, good will to all men. That's what the angel said, good will to all men. And the word good will, it means kindness to all men. So the king of kindness has come. So what am I saying? Uh, I want you to make Jesus delicious so that people will want to eat it. Make Jesus delicious. Make Jesus swallowable. Make Jesus cute. Make Jesus tasty. Make Jesus so appealing. You know, the world is so appealing. I mean, they want to sell you peanut butter. And yet they show you a lady that is half naked. Because they know that that will get your attention. Why is it that Christians are not creative in the way we show kindness to unbelievers? Oh, you insult me, I will insult you back. Oh, bust their nose beat them up and Christians are shouting yay we don't know we are hindering ourselves in the mission that God has given to us which is winning other souls if you can celebrate your crushes on social media you should be able to celebrate Christ on social media you know that's my boo your boo boo boo, but you are ashamed to talk about Christ. That is not kindness. You need to show kindness by telling somebody during this Christmas about, about Jesus Christ. I said, we finish thanks eating, then we should start thanksgiving. You know, it's interesting that the world understood it. So on Tuesday, after the Thursday, they call it. Thanksgiving Tuesday, Giving Tuesday. Did you notice that? Yes. Giving Tuesday. Yes. Because they realized there could be no Thanksgiving without giving. Mm-hmm. So they even say Giving Tuesday. And, 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 and people will be calling, people will be calling. Even a scammer tried to call me. <laughs> I want to scam me. He said his name is Matthew Henry. I said I just give to your brother Spurgeon if your name is Matthew Henry. <laughs> <laughs> he has a do you know a whole bunch of people use it to scam people but these same people will already know that we as christians sometimes we are so greedy that we forget to share christ with somebody else look it's, it's amazing how we feel so comfortable coming to church never share christ with every anybody and we come to church all by ourselves we just come to church and we sit down. It doesn't bother us. We don't like to go to restaurant alone. We like somebody to go with us. We don't like to go to movies alone. We want somebody to go with us. In fact, those, some people that drink, they don't like to go to pub alone unless somebody go with them. But it doesn't bother them to come to church alone. Mm, that's, that is very powerful, Bishop. You know, we just want to come. I just come. I face my business. Look, let's kindness start from there. 
There is somebody in your neighborhood. I, yes. I, I said to the people in Kingdom Connection, you don't know how to preach, that's not a problem. Can you deliver food? Can you just come to church mm -hmm. and make grocery from somebody in your neighborhood or in the neighborhood where they are not and go deliver food to them? There's a woman in Commerce City that was calling us. Mm -hmm. Remember the story? Mm -hmm. And she said, you guys don't know what you have done. And she's blessed by the fact that we are able to provide uh, food for them. I wish we have more people who can do and just yes. drop it at their door yes. and say, hey, from Kingdom Connection, we love you. We, we love you. You know, I, I, I put something on, on my Facebook le, uh, today and uh, I, I just, I, 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 want, I want to show, I want to show you something that is very, very important that uh, to me, I just, I, I, I call it John chapter 8 verse 10. And he says, then Simon Peter drew a sword and slashed off the right ear of Malchus, the high priest's slave. You know, Simon Peter, who has confessed Christ, he was into cutting the ear and Jesus said, put your sword back. So listen, kindness starts with this. When others bickers and fight, you don't. When others seek revenge, you don't. When others keep a list of offenders, you don't. You know what we do? We take the towel, we fill the basin, and we wash that person's feet. When we do that, people will begin to see Christ in us. The Bible says, eight of them will grab you by the by the cloth and say, take me to your God. Please take me to your God. Who is that God that has changed you? The greatest act of kindness we can show to people is that Christ died for them and they are not sinners. I mean, they are not cursed yes. that God can heal them. God, you see, we are messengers of good news and we need to go back to that message of good news. I don't know, you know, uh, how we can feel comfortable when we see people suffering around us mm -hmm. And it doesn't move us. Doesn't us. You know, we have all these big churches, stained glass church, and we drive in our big cars into the rundown neighborhood and we leave. And it does not move us. That's because we are so desensitized to that point that it doesn't even bother us to attack one another in the name of politics mm -hmm. and derade and berate one another. You see, these are the things that God is telling us. You are no longer a child, America. You are no longer a child. Paul said, when I was a child, I, 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 I spoke like a child. I think like a child. You are no longer a child. Christians in, in this country cannot claim that they don't hear the gospel. This is the home of where most of the materials for Christianity is written. It's yeah. time we live up to the expectation that heaven has placed over us. If you are listening to me, we are in a kindness revolution. It is kindness that will change our world one life at a time. I'll be right back. Bishop, thank you so much for illuminating this word, the greatest act of kindness. Yes. In this month of December, when we celebrate mm. the King of Kindness. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. We'll be back with more of this powerful word after these announcements. If you are in need of food or know someone who's in need of food, Join us for our food bank every Thursday from 1 to 5 p.m. We are located at 1391 Oswego Street in Aurora. For more information, give us a call at 720-859-1737. Join us for our services on Sundays. We have services at 8.30, 10 o'clock, and 11.30 a.m. Wednesday's Bible study at 7 p.m. and a wonderful service on Fridays at 7 p.m. Be our special guest. Our December oil change, a powerful ministration of the word 
and an anointing service will take place on December 17th at 7 p.m. Our Christmas Eve service, which is a candlelight service, would be wonderful for you to join us with. We will be celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It will take place on Friday, December 24th at 7 p.m. You will not want to miss our crossover New Year's Eve service on December 31st at 10 p.m. There will be the word, praise and worship, dance ministration, and so much more. Be sure you join us and come early to get a seat. Bishop, indeed, you have just done a, a, a wonderful job in bringing out our ineptness, if you will, mm -hmm. for those of us in the body of Christ regarding kindness. We have overlooked it. We have shunned it. We have thought it not to be important. But Bishop, something that you said really hit home with me. And that was, what about someone who's close to you in your own family circle? Mm -hmm. That perhaps there's been bad blood between you in mm -hmm. the past or mm -hmm. something happened as children, whatever the case may be. But you find it easy to show kindness to everyone else mm -hmm. but that one individual. Mm -hmm. Bishop, perhaps there's someone in the listening or viewing audience today who's saying, that's me. How do I reach one of the closest people to me that I've not been able to reach with kindness? Uh, I've, I've discovered that the easiest way to reach people in your family circle is through modeling. You need to model kindness because they see you. Other people know 60% of you. It is people that are in your household that know you 90 or 98%. Yes. They know your frustrating side. But it is how you model that that will show them that you are genuine. You know, it's like somebody who just cursed everybody else in the house, and then they go to church, he lifted up his two house, yes. hands, and he's singing hallelujah. And the person standing next to him, he said, are you sure? Uh, what happened to the person, right. you know? So modeling is very key. That's one. Two, patience. You will show them kindness, they won't believe you. Remember that the disciples, I mean, the brothers and sisters of Jesus, they didn't believe him in the beginning. They even told him one time, they said, hey, you say you are who you are. If you are what you say you are, why don't you go to Jerusalem now and go and show yourself? And he said, ah. Oh. Don't push me, I know my time. So patience is key. You have to be patient. But also you have to keep showing the kindness. Amen? Sometimes kindness, when you are showing it, before people will notice, it will have been a whole bunch of time. Because if you just do something good, one act of kindness to the family member after you've been fighting for so long, they just think, oh yeah, he, you know, he has a good day today. You know, but when they begin to notice it on a consistent basis, mm -hmm. on a consistent basis, things will change. I know of a man that said, oh, Ade, you won me over with love. He said to me, that you, I, he said, I always thought you are so braggadocious and so on. He said, but when I watch the way you always, you are so kind to my children, you are kind to me, you won me over with love. Now, was it easy for me? No. Sometimes my flesh wants to say, ah, how long am I going to be doing this? But kindness does not count how many times you have shown kindness. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm not saying it's going to be uh, a, a cakewalk. It has to take a denier of my ego to be able to show kindness to somebody who is not kind to us. By our own nature, we want to revenge. You know, number three, you've got to, we've got to spend more time in the word of God. There is no way we can change until the word is in us. 
Until the world becomes flesh, we will not see the glory. The glory and the beauty of God will reflect only in the life of the ones whose the word of God has become flesh. And how do we get the word of God to become flesh? We've got to study the word. We've got to memorize the word. We've got to meditate on the word. You see, we are in information age and yet more people are ignorant than before. It's interesting how much we have iPhone, how this, how that, and people read less of the Bible. People would rather go to Facebook and never face the real book. And until we face the book, Facebook is useless. So I am saying, sp- let such people spend time in the word. The word of God is the key to the heart of man. When God, when you study the word of God, the word of God will come to you and you will read a particular passage of the scripture and it will just pop out or pop out of the book. Oh, this is what I should do. The Bible says, your word I have found and I have I ate them and it has become joy and rejoicing. The Bible says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So the word of God shows you how to confront a situation that is dicey. Without the word of God, the love of God cannot be appreciated. It is the word of God that points us to the love of God. And it is the love of God that changes our ugly self. Without the word of God, we cannot recognize the love of God. Yes. You know, because we are word based. Mm-hmm. We were created by the word. The, the word, it says you are brought forth not with silver or gold, but with the precious word. The precious seed, which is the incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. So we are product of the word. So you and I must learn to go back to the word. If yes. we want to be able to help our family. Another point, prayer. There is no one prayer cannot change. Amen. Kindness does not pray for somebody in their presence as if you are insulting them. You know, somebody was praying for another person. He said, Lord, my, let, let, the, let my brother begin to see, be serious in his life. And the person is standing there. That, that, that may not go in as kindness. Right. You need to do it in secret. Pray for them in secret. Spend time. Fast for them if need be. You know, and, and also this word is very, very interesting. Encouragement. The Bible says encourage one another. Somebody that is not good to you, you go to him and say, how can I be of help? What can I do? Initially, they might, there may be a pushback. Why? No, 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 I'm fine. No, I just, okay, but I'm here. And then, you know, but you uh, I, I don't mean it. I just, no. You have to show that you truly care. When people realize over time that you are legit, le- legit, they will respond in kind over time. Now, you, some, some may be saying, you don't know the people I'm living with. These guys are just from this, the capital city of where Satan lives. But you know what? There's nobody God cannot change. And there is a power in love. There is power in kindness. There is power in showing people that they they, you value them, you know, and 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 also model it around them, not just to them alone, so they don't think you are patronizing them. Find somebody else they know and show kindness. Just let you know, you can be around a pleasant person and you know immediately this person is pleasant. That's all I'm saying. Be pleasant to people. Thank you. God bless you. I'm praying for you. You are not a failure. You can make it. You are the best. Oh, you know, those kind words. Unfortunately, we don't do that quite often. It's so mm-hmm. easy for us to criticize one another and cut each other, each other sharply, you know. Uh, and and uh, water people. The Bible says, generous soul will be made rich. And he who waters will also be watered himself. How do you water? 
the word, the, your word, the word that we speak to people. You know, find someone to bless and see if it doesn't bring refreshment to your own life. If you bless them. Now, these are part of the, the ways you can, you, can, you can use to show your family kindness. And another one, gift. A little gift. It doesn't have to be very expensive. But the heart of it is, is a lot. It goes yes. a long way. Yes. You know, a gift. Find something that, hey, I'm thinking of you, a card. You know, mm -hmm. family member, just a card. Thinking of you, God bless you, praying for you. You know, very, very important. We want to, f we want, I want to commit you to the hands of God and the Holy Spirit that you will be completely committed to kindness. We have tried in the last five, six years in America. We have tried in your face. You know, we have tried cantankerous approach as Christians. We have tried bombastic approach. What did we get? Less and less people coming to church. What did we get in return? Coronavirus. I think coronavirus, you know, as uh, you know, must wake the church up to let us say, no, we, yes. we need to change our style. Mm -hmm. You know, let's begin to show kindness from the pulpit, show kindness. You know, part of kindness is to show people the right thing to do. Don't let us become so petty over little, little things. Let's be big. We are king. We are priests unto God. You know, the blessing of God is big over you. Learn to serve others. Le Let's do competition of who we serve each other more. I'll serve you better than me. Oh, now what do you do? No, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to outserve you. Let there be a competition of serving and many others. Let me pray with you. I have about just a few seconds left. I want to pray with you before I go. I declare in the name that is above all name that this month my God will show you the path of kindness and people will favor you. Every challenge of your life will come to an end. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us. This has been a presentation of the radio ministry of Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. For more information, contact Bishop Israel Ade Ajala by email at info at kcconline.org or by phone at 720-859-1737.